समस्त जन कल्याणे निरत करुणामय नमा चिन्मय देव सद्गु ब्रह्म विद्वर ओ नमो भगवते श्रीरमनाय Shri Dr Venkatramanan is the fourth president of Shri Ramana Ashram. He is the great grandson of Bhagavan Shri Ramana Maharshi's brother Swami Nuranjanananda, the first president of the ashram. Dr Venkat is a physician. He received his MBBS degree from the University of Baroda and went to do his residency in the US at the University of Michigan. He practiced internal medicine in Maryland through his own private practice for over 25 years. In 2020 when his father Shri V Sundara Ramanan the third president of Shri Ramana Ashram passed away he took over as president and returned to India for good with his family over to you doctor when did this help me a quote a book will not transmit its knowledge to the reader unless he reads every word of the book with respect This is Swami Chinmayananda. As we saw the video before, I mean, it will steal some of my thunder, but I will try to minimize the repetition. Both Swami Chinmayananda and Swami Tapavan Maharaj had blessings from Bhagavan at very young age, mere teenagers, when they first came to Him. These spiritual teachers spent their lives reviving in the self to the teachings of bhagavad gita and upanishads no coincidence for bhagwan ramana tak similarly the lives of many saints that is silent power quoting swami chinmayananda's words which should be saw on the film After high school exams were over on a package railway ticket I was roaming to South India as the train streamed through the countryside at halting speed most of the passengers in my compartment suddenly peered through the windows in great excitement and bowed reverently to an elaborate temple beyond inquiring about it I was told that it was a Tiruvannamalai temple that after the talk of my fellow travelers turned to ramana marshi the word marshi conjured up in my mind ancient forest retreats and superhuman beings of divine glow though i was at that time a convinced atheist i chose to take the next available train to tiruvannamalai at the ashram i was told that the marshi was in the hall and anybody was free to walk in and see him as i entered i saw on the couch an elderly man wearing battling but a loin cloth reclining against a round bolster i sat down at the very foot of the couch the marshi suddenly opened his eyes and looked straight into mine i looked into his a mere look that was on I felt that the Maharishi was in that split moment looking deep into me. Now sure he saw all of my shallowness, confusions, carelessness, imperfections and fears. I cannot explain what happened in that one split moment. I felt open, <coughs> clean, healed and emptied. A bird of confusions, my atheism dropping away, but skepticism some you need to question wonder and search but the boy who left the all was not the boy who had gone in a few minutes before after my college days my political work and after years of stay at uttar kashi at the feet of my master tabonji i knew that what i came to the ganges banks was that which had been given to me years before by the saint of Tiruvannamalai on that hot summer day by by a mere look 
During the course of a talk in 1982, Swamiji said, Sri Ramana is not a team for discussion. He is an experience. He is a state of consciousness. Sri Ramana was the highest reality and the cream of all scriptures in the world. He was there for all to see how a master can live in perfect detachment. Though in the mortal form, he lived as the beauty and the purity of the infinite. I'll state the two incidents which happened uh, and by witnessed by many people, which demonstrate the highest respect that Pujya Swamiji had for Sri Ramana, and more importantly, is a demonstration of Swamiji's humility. During a bhiksha like a devotee's home, the devotee praised Swamiji's service to humanity, saying, Swamiji, Saints like you and Sri Ravana. Now, Swamiji stood up and let him finish the sentence. He thundered, See, just like Bhagavan Ramana, our original manufacturers, we are only distributors of what they manufacture. Not what humility, what humility. During another time, Swami Chinyanamji was asked why Swamiji revered Bhagavan Ramana so much. Pat came the red wine, a sonder response is always, he said, while all other masters solved the problems of suffering seekers, Sri Ramana dissolved them all once for all. Similarly, Tapon Maharaj he saw, stated his experience nearly 35, 40 years ago. I had the fortune of having Darshan of Manishri at Tiruvannamalai while he was living in the cave and with his mother and brother. On one midday, I, a young brahmachari at the time, went to the cave, saw Manishri here, placed a bunch of bright fruits, and as what happens in Tiruvannamalai even today, monkeys take it away. But Manishri did not even flinch. Manishri looked at my face lovingly. That is all. Not a single word was spoken. Supreme divine silence prevailed. One hour passed. Maharshi rose for taking his meals. I too rose from my seat, bored again, and began to walk from the cave. Maharshi was the idol of peace and silence. It's the duty of all those who admired and followed him to sink after that divine silence. The inquiry of that divine silence is nothing but the inquiry, who am I? Tapon Maharaji goes on to say, O oh man, inquire and be immersed in that inner silence. Do all the work of this world to reach that goal, to attain that divine, divine silence. If you already have that silence, then do work for Loka Sangra, if you like. Just as the ocean is dancing, laughing, and roaring with its thundering waves, but its inner depth is always perfect silence, peace, and stillness. So, indeed, today I want to thank Chinmaya Vishen for spreading Bhagavan's core teachings for Desasaram Satyashana to all in all the centers. Oh, here overseas, especially. Many light spiritual minds have come to Bhagavan Ramana through an introduction to his teachings from Chinmaya Nishan. Many spiritual Ramana devotees are also members of Chinmaya Vishen. And this is not surprising because there is a natural conflict here because the focus is on Jnana Marga in both institutions. Mumukshros seeking to cross the ocean of samsara flock to both these institutions. Swami Chinmayamanji spearheaded a global Hindu spiritual cultural renaissance and brought, brought Hindu spiritual texts 
and values to everyone, teaching Italy English all across India and abroad. His was a simple but important vision, being in his own words, to convert Hindus to Hinduism. We at Sri Ramanashrama are also grateful for Swamiji taking up the co-editorship responsibility of the first magazine that was started after the Maha Nirvana of Ramana Maharshi. This was started in 1962 in Bombay called, called Divine. And Swamiji also wrote many inspiring articles along with being the co-editor. He brought an enthusiastic, joyous, inspirational energy to his lectures. His sense of humor is legendary. He exemplified what I always think, Advaita is for beginners in the whole world. Oh. Friends, the light of wisdom that was lit on the mountain slopes of Arunachana blossomed into an effulgence of spiritual knowledge the world over. Sri Ramana Varshi said there are three forms of development of Sandhaks. One is a gun powder light uh, in uh, sharpness. The other one is dry wood, another one is a wet wood. So Swamiji and Takon Maharaj are like gun powder devotees. All they needed was a spark of uh, science and wisdom from Brahmana Maharshi and then they, they could just get the import of the spiritual wisdom. I will now express a few words about the uniqueness of Bhagavan Sri Ramana. Bhagavan Sri Ramana, the ocean of praise. He was, as you all know, accessible for all 24 hours to anyone, humans and animals. No permission was needed to see him. There was no special darshan hours. Devotees, devotees, in fact, till end, used to sleep around him. He used to sleep on the couch, and people used to sleep on around him. So much so that in the night, when he had to wake up to answer the call of nature, he had to step over sleeping devotees. And he would shine his torchlight against his uh, stomach and use that reflected light so as nobody was disturbed. And there would also be dogs sleeping around in the road. And he used to uh, take them outside to the hands in the call of nature too. He was a unique guru who served his disciples and not the other way around. In fact, he used to, because the demonstration of that was, he used to wake up every day, two o'clock in the morning, to go to the kitchen to cut vegetables for the morning cooking. And whatever he prepared was most delicious. Now, he also would uh, use that opportunity in the kitchen to impart the highest teachings of Vedanta, especially to those uh, child widows who used to be cooking. And he used to explain them in the most simple terms, the highest forms of Vedic teachings. I'll just quote one such say is quote. You must cover your vegetables when you cook them. Then only they will keep their flavor and be fit for food. Food. Just the same with wine. You must put a lid over it and let it simmer quick, quietly. Then only does a man or a woman become food fit for God to eat. Okay. For Harindra Nath Chattopani, a famous poet, uh, Great is sat easily on and has beauty on a sunset cloud, albeit with devastating effect, as often as not. For all other ideas as to how the great should act seem to be dismissed by him with a smile of simple disavowal. End of quote. In a traditional sense, it was not a scholar, but scholars went to him to have their doubts clarified. He never wrote anything of his own accord, 
what he wrote at the request of other fills a few books his mother tongue was tamil but he wrote in chanting poems not only in tamil but also in sanskrit malayalam and telugu scholars in these languages are astonished at the beauty of the poetry he also had a delightful sense of humor while his very high school teacher came to see him and we all know marshi uh, left madurai uh, by writing a note and uh, not finishing high school and he says when marshi gave the high school teacher one of his compositions the teacher was impressed asked him questions about the verses in that work marshi he looked at all the devotees and said quote look i left madurai scanning of answer in his questions in school he has come all the way to ask questions again in the court he was silent much of the time and despite doubts to his science his was the silence of the mind his was the language of pure consciousness as and the word he duncan green is says I know no other person whose mere presence has thus enabled me to make the personality drop deep down into the abyss of nothingness where it belongs. I saw no other human being who so emanates his grace that it can plunge others deep into ecstasy of timeless omnipresent being. I remember she is um the older than not but the which has been which has been translated as sadarshana for a year one has two mangala slokas which saints write the verses of benediction the first verse begins with in tamil older than that which is the second verse begins with the word manana and is death that which is not I think Maharishi was the first person to use the term Marana or death in Mangala Shloka. And why not? This most apt for it was a death experience that made him realize his Atman. Death of the ego, the body consciousness was the birth of the eternal awareness, the Aham Spurana. Ramana exists in Marana when we, and even Haa, uh, if you turn the words around it it can manana becomes kamana <laughs> uh, what do you think of manana friends we should think of ramana especially it in tribe of the seer of god but when ramana saw himself in others and others in himself therefore there was no one to bless and no one to be blessed in the state of pure advaita there is no other that for the question of guru and shishya did not arise one of the spiritual paradoxes is that one who lays down his life finds it one who serving the rest one's individuality becomes more individual than anyone else the jivan mukta who has dissolved the ego the ego which exploits and perverts one's individual character is its and therefore these characteristics in a jivan mukta can grow to their true likeness neither stunted nor war shining forth more clear than in other people the books in the ashram during his time were always made to be kept back in their places cloths covering the couches were scrupulous and clean and beautifully folded The ashram wall was swept out several times daily. The books, as I said, had to be placed where they were taken from. The loin cloth was all that he had. Made the two, and you know, one wash washed, the other to be wore. But it was always gleaming white. And it's no, uh, the ashram has not done any uh, photoshopping to make it look whiter. It was how, how he used to. be meticulously clean the two clocks on the hall were adjusted daily to the radio time he was affable and courteous to all visitors 
He expressed no pontifical solemnity in his exposition. His speech was vivacious, full of laughter. So infectious was his laughter that even who did not know Tamil would spontaneous, spontaneously join in. And right up to the end, he joked. In fact, he used to uh, joke about the most painful uh, tumor one can get, Sarthoma on his arm. He used to describe it as a Navaratana, glowing. And his jokes always brought spiritual inspections. His face was like that of water, always changing, yet always the same. It was love, luminous understanding in his eyes. Upon Ramana, he neither to found a new religion, nor give guidance strictly within an existing one, but to open a path to those who seek in all religions of the world over, responding to the conditions of the world in which he came. And that was the most difficult time he existed. To think of it, two world wars, the plague epidemic, the Holocaust, and uh, the fight for independence. There was turmoil everywhere, but Nashram, it was always that as if the external world did not exist. It was only Atman really. So that was also a proof that the external world can be whatever, but the internal voice and the peace is what the, is achievable, you know, uh, under a Sadhguru's watchful eyes. He opened the direct path of self-inquiry based on Advaita, which had become too arduous, even in those days, for spiritual, our spiritually dark age. It requires no ritual, forms of worship, no priesthood, no outer signs or special observations. People can practice it in the workshop, workshop, kitchen, city office, as well in the ashram. It requires no great burden of fear. The task here is to transcend the ego sense, so that only the self, which alone was, is unwillingly, remains in eternal consciousness, seeing all the panorama of the world has its own manifestation. As Bhagavan said, you have only to unrealize unreality and the reality will appear of its own. Here, there is not one self discovering another, but an awakening of awareness of the permanent self in all of us by constantly being the self. Knowing is being. While meditating, Ramana also taught us to concentrate our consciousness on the spiritual heart which exists on the right side of the heart. The meditation awakes a current of awareness, consciousness of I in this heart, not in the ego sense, by the feeling of the essential I, the universal self. With this, this consciousness becomes a constant undercurrent to all actions of life. This awareness deepens into an ever vaster space beyond all understanding, consuming the ego and bringing as a realization of the self. And with folks, warnings. The Brahmastra of our scheme, where did this thought come from and why and to who, leads each thought back to the basic I thought. Who am I? There is of course no mental or verbal answer to the question, who am I? We could keep asking all day and there's just the mind-given answers. But the, the real focus of the inquiry is to realize that the ego is only phantom and our duty is just to be in that state of abidance that follows. As Ramana said, summa iru. Just we can attend to the affairs of her life knowing that Atman is unaffected by them. Every attack of greed, anger or desire can be dispelled by vichara. From now, never encourage anyone to give up the life in the world. By rejecting the thought, I am the doer, and remembering only I am, by means of vichara, 
one can preside in any way. Only inwardly, only inwardly can one withdraw into solitude by abiding in the universal solitude of the heart. Finally, it awakens love through knowledge. Friends in conclusion, Swami Chinmayananda Ji is a mighty thundering personality who expounded the knowledge of a greater Vedanta worldwide. He brought this to millions of people, while Bhagavan Ramana is a gentle, greatest impersonality, impersonality who exemplifies personifies and beta Vedanta. These two gurus will be enshrined for eons as the guides for Mumukshus, seeking to end the cycles of birth and death. Hari Om, thank you for your attention. Om Shri Chinmaya Sankurave Namaha